What's up everybody, Hunter here, and today I wanted to take a look at React and performance optimization with things like uh, react.memo and then the hooks such as useMemo and useCallback and how those work kind of in conjunction uh, to give you some performance optimizations in React. So let's get into the code here. Uh, what I have is a simple bare bones create react app. I'm going to do a yarn start on it to start up the development server. And I already had it up, but here we go again. And I'll switch to the console and clear it out. Okay, so this is base create react app. And if I open it up in VS Code, this is what it looks like. If you demoed around and played around with React, I'm sure you've played with this before. I'm going to do a little cleanup here. So I'm going to clear out some of the stuff. And um, as you can see, it's hot reloading right here. So in order to demonstrate this, I am going to create a child component. So this app.js is the main component. I'm going to in the source folder make a components folder I'm gonna make a new functional component called child component and I'm going to just delete the little script that gives me a child component so I'm gonna return to this our return so I'm gonna do child component. Okay, now I'm going to go back into the parent component. I'll import the child component from components, child component. Okay. And I will put it in here. All right, so child component right here. So by default, every time a parent component re-renders in React, the child component will re-render as well, regardless of if it has props or anything like that. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to make a little uh, counter that you increment with like a button. So we'll use some state. I'm going to use the use state hook here. And I'll just make a count and then a set count. We'll use state. And I'm going to start the count off at zero. Okay. And right here, let's just do something like the count is count. All right, so we should have a count of zero. And then we're going to make a button type of button and on click it's going to just add one to the count. So, and we're doing this to basically re-render the parent component and then we can then see what happens to the child component once the parent component um, gets re-rendered. So do that we'll do a set count and then we'll do a count plus one. Okay and this is we'll just call this add or something like that not really doesn't really matter all right looks really bad let's add a little paragraph so it gives it a little bit of space okay so our count is working right so to demonstrate the re-renders what we can do is in the child component we can do like a console lock so we're going to make this return and then we'll do a console.log Basically, every time this logs, it's like the component is re-rendering. Re-render 
underscore child. Okay, so this child component has no props, it has nothing, it's just by itself. So what happens when I start clicking? You can see that it's re-rendering right now. And that is default React behavior. It's not going to do anything uh, magical for you to prevent that from happening. So this is where the first thing comes in, which is react.memo. So react.memo is a higher order component, and you wrap it around your functional component. So we can do something like this. So export default react.memo. And when we wrap the child component in react.memo, now when we see, so let's clear it out and refresh. It's going to have an initial render, right? This is like the component mounting, and it's, re it's rendering for the first time. But now, as you can see, when I hit the clicky, 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 nothing is additionally re-rendering. So that is the performance optimization, optimization they're talking about. All right, so let's kind of break this a little bit by adding some props to this component. Now, with react.memo, you can add like a title prop, and it can be a string like this, is the title, okay? And in here, we can then start adding like h2 maybe. And I'm going to put this in the paragraph tag. And then the h2 can do props that title. Okay. So then when you pass in the title as a string, this is key here, as a string, it's still working fine, right? So, key takeaway is strings, uh, like a number, basically all the primitives will be okay with react.memo. Now, when, it, when you start passing in things like arrays and objects, that is when uh, things start to break. So, to demonstrate this, I'm going to make a const of array, right? And we're going to make this an array of just some like one, two, and threes. Okay. And then, so our title's there, and now when we pass in our array, we can see that it starts to re-render again. So, why is that? Well, it's because React.memo isn't smart enough to distinguish, or it's not, it's picking up that this is an array, but what is actually happening is every time this re renders, the array gets remade. It's like a new array every single time. So React.memo is going, is comparing the previous props to the current props. And it's saying, okay, are they different? And if they are not different, then it will not re-render. But since this is re-rendering or being created anew every single time, it is not smart enough to catch that, and then it kind of just re-renders it uh, every time. So to prevent this, we're going to use the hook th called use memo. So what use memo is, what use memo does is we basically wrap it around an array or an object and then it will kind of memoize it and it won't um, make it, it won't create a new array every single time the parent re-renders. So we can use it like this, use memo and use memo takes a function and then you can return the array or the object or anything like that and then it has a second dependency array so this is not really depend on anything so this dependency array is blank so now if we save this and we start counting again we can see that it's fixed 
there's no more re-renderings of the child That's because we're memorizing it. So this is one way to fix it. Another way is if you don't have anything in the dependency array, you can just kind of skip the use memo altogether. And the better solution is to actually take this out of the function body. And if you just like put it up here, now every time the parent re-renders, it's not going to make this array new again. It's going to keep it the same. And then you don't even need to use memo at this time. And if we do this, you can see that there are no extra re-renders. So key takeaway is if you do a string primitives, it's fine. Once you start doing arrays and objects, then you're going to want to consider use memo or once you use, use memo and there's nothing in the dependency array, you should bump it out. As, as much as possible, you should bump the arrays and objects out of your function body so they're not constantly being made over and over again when the parent uh, gets re-rendered. All right, so that is how use memo works. Um, I'm going to undo that. All right, so now what happens if we try to pass a function into the child component? Well, the same kind of thing will happen. Let us uh, examine that real quick. So I'm going to use this, I'm going to make a function that uh, gets some data from an API. And I'm going to use this API here, this JSON placeholder, just like a dummy API. And with here, you can get things like to-dos, and uh, you can get users and stuff like that. So I'm just going to copy this real quick. All right, so in order to do that, we're going to have to use the use effect hook here. Okay, let's give it a dependency array. Let's do a little fetch to make sure everything works. All right, so it's going to do to do's. And all right, it's working now. You can see, and if we go into the network tab, we can see that it's working right here. It's getting the data. All right, so. What if we want to make this a little more reusable, right? So let's say we don't we want to do's on the parent component, but maybe on the child component we want like users or something. So what we can do is make a function out of it. So const uh, we can call it like fetch data. Something like that, right? And we can return this okay and then we can pass in maybe the type and if we make this into a template literal okay so now we're gonna fetch the type so this is a little more reusable so if we do fetch data and if we want let's see what the types are so to do's is one of the types so let's say on the parent we want to fetch to do's. Okay. Okay, but in the on the child we want to fetch, I don't know, users or something. So what you would do is you can pass this down into the child. Let me get rid of this array for right now. And we're gonna pass in the fetch data. Okay, into the child component. So it'll look like that. Give it a little save. And then in the child component, now we can do a little copying because we're going to have the use effect again. So I put it under here and maybe do a use effect. Okay, and then this will now be props.fetchData because we're getting it from the parent. 
All right, and then in this we want users. All right, so at first glance everything looks great, right? This happens when you do this, it looks normal, right? But if you notice, if you're using Create React app, it's going to give you these warnings on the dependency arrays, uh, part of the ESLint hooks, rule of hooks. And one of the rules of hooks and the use effect hook is that when you have a, it's kind of like a cheat to just give it a, an empty array for the dependency array. Um, Dan Abramoff made like a nice blog post about use effect and how to use it. Um, this video isn't really about use effect, but one of the takeaways is just leaving a blank dependency array is kind of cheating and you want to avoid that and you can kind of read the reasons why. If you hit quick fix on it and fix it, it's going to put in props in here because in reality, props.fetchData is the dependency. Okay, so if we save this, we come back here. What's going to happen every time now? Well, we're going to be fetching data every time we hit this add button, which is not very good. It's actually very bad because look, every time we hit it, we not only re render the child, we're now re getting data, right? So and if you're not careful, you could find yourself in like an infinite loop situation. And that is very bad. So what is happening here? Well, this is a function. And same thing with the arrays and the objects. Every time the parent re-renders, which is every time I'm clicking this button, the function will be created anew and when you pass this function as a prop into the child component react.memo is going to be like okay it's a new function I'm going to and if it's in a dependency array especially I'm going to rerun this use effect every single time so that is no good and this is where the use callback hook comes in so much like the use memo use callback is made just for functions. So how we use it is very similar to use memo. We wrap our function in a use callback. So we can now do something like use callback. It's going to look the same as use memo. You give it a function initially. Actually we can just do this. We can just copy our nice function from earlier and straight up paste it in there and then this will have a dependency array notice how it's empty so we can actually bump this out which is the better way to do it but for demo sake let's pretend that um, you know we need something there's something in here and that we need to keep it in the body of this and this is actually giving us a squiggly as well so if we do a quick fix it's going to pass this into here. So we have done the use callback on this function. So it's going to memoize this function, which means every time the parent gets re-rendered, it's not going to change, and then the child will also not re-render. So let's save that, make sure everything looks right. So we're passing in fetch data in here. We didn't really change anything. And now, if we do a initial load, see we get the two. And now when I click on the add button, no more extra network requests, which is good. All right, so that is how you use the use callback. So the general takeaway is every time you're passing things as props into a child component, um, and those things are an array, a function, an object. Your like spider senses should be tingling, especially when you're when you're adding them to dependency arrays, either in like a use effect or anything else that has a dependency array. When you start 
adding like a function to a dependency array, you should start thinking, okay, where did this function come from? And do I need to use something like a use callback? Or the better option is if there's nothing in here, you should actually just move this whole thing out. So if we move it out of the body, it's the same function. And we don't even need use callback, right? We just save some steps. And the initial load, it looks good. Hitting add also looks good. No extra network requests. Now, one thing I thought like, well, I should just memoize everything. Why don't I just react.memo all the things? Because it seems like it's awesome, right? It's going to prevent extra re-renders. And I'm going to use callback on all the things. But uh, there is a blog post here by Kent that says you shouldn't just use memo and use callback everything. Uh, there's actually a cost to it. So every benefit, there's a cost and the price you pay. So I'm going to link this blog down in the description so you can take a look at it. Hopefully, if you look through this, it makes a little more sense now that you watch this video. And it shows you that you shouldn't just memo everything. You should be smart about it. And But now you kind of know how it works and uh, the situations where it's important, such as dependency arrays. Very important. When you're passing like an array into the object into here, make sure those get memoized so this doesn't just constantly run every time the parent gets re-rendered. Uh, hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you want to see more, kind of like, I guess this is a little more advanced. This is like performance React. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know. Uh, otherwise, have a great day.